Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find the content that I provide in this video and all of my videos on the on my YouTube channel useful. Uh, Liking um, is a way of basically supporting for free, it doesn't cost you anything. Just uh, press the like button, thumbs up, and uh, it really helps get this uh, quality content out to uh, struggling traders and uh, traders who don't really understand uh, about really um, combining fundamental with te technical analysis. So um, if you are new, just a quick um, I guess synopsis of what we do here at Trading 180 and our trade process is literally just applying fundamental analysis to establish directional bias and then we apply technical analysis strategies like uh, capture pain relief, supply and demand zones daily and uh, stop hunts to uh, to really just uh, use to enter our trades along with some risk management and uh, obviously some profit targets, right? So, um, before we get into the technicals and fundamentals, just looking at the calendar and the week ahead and uh, zooming in a little bit, the first quarter of earnings season gets underway, so that's to do with stocks with updates expected from major banks such as JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. On the economic uh, data front, important releases to follow include the US and Eurozone retail sales and industrial production figures. UK monthly GDP, that would be important. Uh, GDP is always important. Uh, China first quarter GDP uh, that will even though we don't necessarily trade the uh, Chinese uh, yuan currency it's good for global growth if uh, if China are growing as well and trade balance um, that directly affects Australia as well and um, and uh, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar who are um, uh, and China are their biggest trade partners, right? So if China are growing, they should have a knock-on effect on um, really the world, but specifically commodity currencies like Australia and uh, New Zealand. Australia, I mean, uh, sorry, employment data will also be uh, something to watch as, again, that is an indication of uh, growing uh, GDP. So business and consumer morale in India inflation. We don't necessarily trade the, the uh, Indian currency. Uh, central bank meetings will be held in South Korea, New Zealand. So the New Zealand, uh, the RBNZ is something to uh, uh, keep an eye on and what their monetary policy is will be going forward. And, um, and yeah, Singapore and Turkey. Anyway, so a couple of um, a couple of things to keep uh, keep an eye out on when it comes to uh, understanding where the fundamental trajectories should be and getting into the uh, technicals and fundamental analysis and starting off as we always do on the dollar index um, and DXY and this week we did have a bit of a pullback on the daily and uh, I am personally uh, bullish on the dollar but just because I'm bullish on the dollar doesn't mean that every single week or every single day that the uh, the dollar is going to make you know new highs right it doesn't make it doesn't work like that so we have to look at the bigger picture and see where the dollar is going um, and then basically try and take advantage of potential pullbacks into supply or demand zones again fundamentals are the reasons why we choose our direction but then understand also as well that not every single day or every single week you're going to get a dollar you know, pullback, for example, or, you know, dollar's going to move higher every single day. But uh, there was a bit of a demand zone, which I deleted, which really was at the highs. And I was, I, was, I said last week that I wasn't keen on, on, on that. And really we use the, um, the, the, the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the pound, the euro and the yen. And so this is really just used as a uh, confluence, right? So if the dollar uh, um, index starts to move higher, for example, then um, that would be confluence that of dollar strength. If it moves down a uh, bit of dollar weakness or just basically just some sort of pullback, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that the dollar is weak. It just means that for this, you know, period in history, for example, you know, this week it was, you know, there was a bit of a pullback. But pullbacks allow the financial institutions and the people that trade fundamentals and have long term, medium to long term term uh, vision um, to actually buy the dollar for cheaper who wants to buy the dollar up here when you can buy the dollar for cheaper down here and look at your risk reward right if it at least reaches the overall high so that's the way to kind of look at it but um, moving forward uh, for me I am um, more bullish on the dollar and uh, for various reasons 
Um, there was some re recent good news out on the <clears throat> inflation front. So US data suggests inflation pressure is building. So US producer price inflation hit a 10 year high in March, adding to signs that there uh, may be a durable jump in prices coming through. That will set tongues wagging among Fed watchers, um, some who of whom believe that the central bank will be forced to, into raising interest rates. Raising interest rates is always positive for a currency or should be positive for a currency. Um, and uh, if the central bank is forced into raising rates, uh, which they should be if there is inflation, um, quicker than some investors expect. So um, uh, inflation, higher inflation, um, and central banks have a 2% inflation target. If inflation starts to get to their 2% target and maybe uh, beyond that, then the central bank will be forced to raise or hike interest rates um, to try and stem inflation as long as obviously GDP and the, and the, uh, and the um, economy is doing well. And in the Financial Times, uh, US markets shift pr to price in Fed uh, rate rise next year. So analysts warn timetable is too aggressive even as economy uh, quickly recovers and uh, there's some interesting uh, thoughts in this so the, the quickening US economic recovery has markets pricing in a Federal Reserve rate hike as soon as next year but analysts warn this accelerated timetable uh, is, um, is is far too aggressive so recent data pointing to a strong recovery in the labor market and leading indicators signaling rapid growth in uh, both the services and factory sectors have prompted traders to sharpen their bets that the US central bank will lift interest rates from near zero sooner than previously anticipated. Euro dollar futures, a closely tracked measure of interest rate expectations, now indicate the Fed will um, uh, initiate liftoff by the end of 2022 with three additional interest rate hikes. Um, uh, interest rate increases pension by early 2024. So this that stands in sharp contrast to what Fed officials have recently signaled, which is for rates to stay tethered to zero until at least 2024. So it's really kind of uh, by the rumors of the fact the market is pricing in uh, earlier rate hikes and um, the Fed are trying to be a bit more cautious. So uh, what we go with obviously what the market thinks and uh, so the market are really kind of pricing in um, uh, rate hikes. So again, by the rumor, sell the fact, right? By the time um, the rumor starts to come to fruition, the money would have been made. So if the market is penciling in an earlier rate hike, then why would I, um, you know, as a, a retail trader, you know, um, think any, any, any different? So it's just uh, having a trade idea and having the confluence. So going back to the technicals, for me, if, if the market are looking to price in a rate hike, and that should be positive for the dollar, then any pullbacks are buying opportunities. So let's see what happens. If we can get a little bit of more of a pullback into that zone as confluence, then that would be brilliant. Any kind of short trades up into this supply zone here, I'm going to you know, maybe just move this over to this area there and there so that's where you know we've got some supply we've also got a little bit of supply right here as well lower high lower low right there and um, supply so uh, so yeah but I think this higher area if you did want to get short on the dollar based on some maybe some negative news that might come out you know within the next week or two because remember that the data has to support the narrative so the narrative is for potential rate hikes and as long as there's good GDP growth, inflation is going in the right direction, then, um, you know, and, and obviously the vaccine rollout as well, then that supports a dollar hike narrative. So if, as long as we keep seeing that, then it's pretty much for me anyway, long dollars. But if you do want to get short, these are the areas you want to look for any kind of short trades as confluence. Moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen um, again, was waiting for a bit of a pullback which we managed to get but just not down into this demand zone this daily demand zone at the moment um so if again prices can pull back into this daily demand that would be really nice we've got another supply zone here but i'll focus on supply in a sec um so any kind of pullback into this daily demand that would be a really nice 
by um, the dollar, sorry, the yen is a risk off currency and tends to do well in a risk off environment, um, but we're more in a risk on environment to be fair. So um, I couldn't see really the uh, the yen doing well and we've been in the risk on environment really since the beginning of the year and you've seen pretty much what's been happening. So um, just a bit of a pullback for anyone who's trend trading into a demand zone before looking at getting long. If you are getting short and there is a change in risk sentiment, then this is gonna be a first and second area to look for any kind of short trades to buy the yen if you think that the yen is a bargain at those prices. Moving on to the dollar Swiss. And the dollar Swiss is pulled back to a very nice area. Again, just um, to go over you know, the, the demand zones. So obviously there wasn't you know, any kind of demand here. And again, just really looking at where demand was considering the, the overall where the trend is really kind of buying at highs you don't really want to be buying at highs to be fair um yes there is opportunities there but it's not necessarily the best area you want to really wait for pullbacks into you know deeper zones deeper pullbacks and so this area here for me is really nice i do like that area of demand and um, let's see what happens here if prices can pull back then brilliant if not then this is going to be the next zone for me anyway to get long on you don't have to and obviously this isn't uh financial advice i'm going to just put another supply zone here now again you would look for any kind of supply zones uh, if you think that the dollar is going to get weaker and the swiss franc is going to get stronger so uh, that's going to be the first area to look for any kind of uh, uh, short trades at the moment, unless prices make lower lows, and then you and then a pullback into that lower high before looking at getting uh, short. But uh, I think all all signs are really pointing towards a stronger dollar, and even um, in a in a, in an uptrend, you have to get pullbacks. Right, there has to be liquidity. Again, I explained this last week, but if you don't have enough buyers. If people want to get long, right? If traders and ultimately, you know, they want to get long, then there has to be enough sell orders to facilitate buying. Yeah. And if there's not enough sell orders above the market to facilitate buying so that liquidity, yeah, for liquidity and prices to go higher, then prices are going to look for this liquidity. And if you and if anyone who's buying at these areas, who's buying in that area there, what is their stop loss? It's a sell order. So it starts to stop hunt these people also as well at the same time draws in traders who want to go short who are just following price randomly because they believe price action is king they're getting short and who's taking the other side of these um of that trade right as we know if traders going short who's on the other side of your trade it's the smart money so as trade new traders go short the smart money are able to buy on the way down and then look for potential long trades here so it's all about buying at value and uh, let's see um where uh where prices do lead this week if they do go higher brilliant if they don't it just means that for me longer term i'm buying the dollar for cheaper especially against the swiss franc the swiss franc is not really a buy they've got negative interest rates you know, minus 0.75 i think it is um who wants to be a buyer and hold uh swiss francs doesn't make any sense so um especially when you compare it to the dollar which is at 0 0.25 interest rates so for holding dollars just for holding dollars you're getting a higher interest rate and in fact if you hold swiss francs then you then you're basically losing money so um yeah for me buyers if you do want to get short then the 0 0.9418 is your um your uh your preferred area, your preferred supply zone area. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD. Um, again, this is a bit of a tricky one. I'm not really interested in this pair. Two kind of strong pairs, you know, fighting it out. Um, it's like the Canadian dollar is winning at the moment. Lots of supply, you know, being uh, being made. Lots and lots of supply zones, a downtrend lower highs and lower lows i'm going to delete those to kind of tidy up the chart probably delete this one up top as well so uh, just zooming in a little bit again when you get two strong currencies um uh, kind of uh, uh, competing then you should get this kind of choppy ranging market trends tend to happen when you've got a weak currency versus a strong currency which is what was happening last year um or earlier this year i should say and then there was a bit of a dollar dollar sentiment change but you can see that the, the canadian dollar is still um 
really a, a quite a strong currency as far as a commodity currency. There was some positive news out around um, uh, employment as well for the Canadian dollar, so um, it continued the narrative. But if you do want to get long um, on the US dollar, then this is a really nice zone. Any short trades really should have been um, probably this area here before getting short. If not, I think the best area is probably up around these highs 129 area before looking at getting short. Moving on to the New Zealand, the New Zealand dollar Swiss, sorry, bit of a tongue twister there. Uh, New Zealand dollar, um, again, two uh, strong currencies last week, all we saw is really just sideways price movement. Um, I think again, this area is okay for a decent uh, long trade if you do want to get long on the New Zealand dollar. But um, again, with, with just the, from a currency, a fundamental selection, it's not really the best uh, currency pair similar to the uh, dollar CAD, it's not really great. But if you want to look for any kind of long trades, pullbacks into this zone here is decent, or you're looking at short trade from around this uh, 71, 0.71908 uh, area. Uh, pound, dollar, and the pound, dollar again, two currencies I'm not too, uh, or a currency pair I'm not too keen on uh, trading at the moment and it's really because the uh, the pound is seen as uh, recovering quite well when it comes to uh, the vaccine so um, uh, where is my uh, where is my pound here we go it's UK sorry well uh, races towards elusive milestone in quest to control COVID right so UCL uh, model suggests some 75% of UK population as antibody scientists see too many unknowns to say uh, COVID end is near but the UK increased its COVID immunity sorry the UK's increased COVID-19 immunity raises prospects of moving on from the worst of the pandemic with some scientists saying the country could cross a key threshold as soon as Monday, according to researchers at University College London. That's when so-called herd immunity could be achieved in the UK. Almost three quarters of the population will have antibodies against the virus, either through vaccination or past infection estimate. So Britain has already seen a plunge in new cases and deaths and the government will relax restrictions, including on outdoor dining on Monday. So those developments uh, have fueled hopes that the nation will, so will soon shake off its COVID shackles, which basically is positive for what? GDP growth, right? So we're getting back to some sort sort of normality, um, you know, in the UK. Um, surprisingly, very surprisingly, is you know ahead uh, one of the countries that is ahead um, of uh, of um, when it comes to the vaccine rollout and, and you know opening up their doors, right? So when we're looking at currencies to trade, you always want to look for tr um, currencies that are diverging, right? So the divergence between um, the pound and the dollar isn't necessarily that strong because the dollar is also looking at um, you know reopening and the, their economy is quite strong and uh, the UK are, you know waiting on uh, positive uh, COVID um, recovery to basically translate into positive data so um, two strong currencies so for me not necessarily the best from a currency pair perspective but if you do want to get long here is a decent long and if you do want to get short, then I'd have to probably move this down a little bit more to about here. And I would say that's probably the area we want to look for um, on the side of that 138, 1.385, sorry, 1.38354 area is when you want to look for potential short trades. But overall, I think for me, this uh, this pair isn't really something I'm interested in fundamentally. I know traders uh, tend to want to uh, get married to pairs, which you shouldn't really be married to any kind of pair. If you follow the fundamentals, you're just following where the strength and the weakness is, and uh, then that will tell you where really the trends are and where the easier trades are. Um, but uh, if you do want to get long, again, in this demand zone, if you want to get short, the first area is looking at that area. I think up top, if prices do come up here, I am interested in getting short there, matter of fact, but let's see what happens. Um, moving on to the uh, euro dollar and the euro dollar um, is something that I am interested in, matter of fact, and uh, earlier in the week, this supply zone didn't really work out 
But um, again, as I was saying, it's just you're buying really at lows. If you consider where you where the trend has been, you know, lower highs and lower lows, right? Lower highs, lower lows, and then you're going to try and get short there. It's obvious that we we'll say obvious it could have worked out, but it's not the best area to look for any kind of short trades. It's always a pullback, and I did say that last week in last week's video that I'm interested in this area here. So that's uh, that's where the best area is, and this this whole area, this whole uh, supply zone, and again buying the dollar over the euro. And why would I be buying the dollar over the euro? So um, the ECB Council is concerned about the slow pace of the vaccination in the eurozone. So policymakers at March's meeting also pointed out positive effects of U.S. Uh, stimulus growth on prospects so um there's again there's 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 an expressed concern about the slow pace of vaccinations in the eurozone and it might delay the union's economic recovery yeah according to minutes of their last meeting so these are the smartest guys in the room telling you what their concerns really are and um, we've got germany doubles the pace of covid shots amid uh, surge in cases so there was a surge in cases when it comes to uh, when it when Germany, uh, when you think about what's going on in, and going on in, in the UK and um, and in uh, the US, you're uh, uh, you're seeing massive divergences still. Merkel agrees on changes to in in infection legislation with states. So Germany has doubled its case after a sl um, its pace of COVID nineteen vaccinations after a sluggish start as it battles a third wave of the virus that threatens to overwhelm medical facilities. And um, I think there was another um, uh, some more bad news. So for example, industry suffers in Germany and France as virus forces lockdowns. This was on the 9th of April. So February output dropped uh, 1.6 in Germany and fell 4.7% in France. So ec um, economists had predicted increases in both countries. So that's again, just adding to um, the, the, the the negative sentiment potentially. So Germany and France, the euro area's two biggest or two largest economies both saw unexpected declines in, in industrial uh, production in February, suggesting that coronavirus restrictions are increasingly harming parts of the economy that have uh, proved resilient so far. So again, um, there's massive divergences there. So as long as that continues, for me, um, it's pretty much shorts all the way. But again, this isn't financial advice. If you do want to get long, then there is a bit of demand right there. Um, and then there is a little bit of demand at the top, which prices have kind of bounced off of temporarily. Now, again, nobody knows whether prices are going to go all the way down this week or whether they might pop up and go down or even they might pop up even higher. But either way, the higher it goes for me, as long as the narrative stays the same when it comes to understanding um, where prices should go in the medium to long term. Um, and uh, obviously understanding that there's the divergence is still continuing. So for example, the dollar is, uh, the US economy is growing, the uh, Euro, Euro, European and Eurozone is struggling, then we should really want to look for some dollar buys, which means shorting the Euro. So just look for opportunities, depending on either, either right now or the high prices go, you know, uh, we should uh, look for uh, some short trades and again not financial advice this is just what i am doing um so with that being said that's pretty much where we are if you do want to get long on the euro i'd probably say wait for a deeper pullback anywhere around the 17 1 uh, 17 50 area to 117 round number before getting long Moving on to the euro yen and the euro yen has come up to this supply zone. I did like it technically and you saw where prices did, you know, kind of sell off a little bit. Um, again, when we're looking at entries, we tend to go down into the one hour and uh, look for some zones, look for some um, uh, candles to, uh, to, to short off of. So um, that's where our, we get our good risk reward from. But this currency pair is not something I'm really interested in. Um, don't really like the uh, euro um, and I don't really like the yen so um, unless risk is going to be majorly off then buying the yen is is the one but if risk is on then there are better really pairs to buy than the euro even though you've seen this uh, major uptrend to be fair on the uh, euro yen it's not something that I'm really interested in um, from from a fundamental perspective uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar again similar to 
you know, the CAD dollar, uh, sorry, dollar CAD and the New Zealand, um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar pair. And it's really, the, you've got two competing currencies, two strong currencies. So when you get two strong currencies, you tend to get, you know, a ranging market. So it's difficult to tell which way you know the price may go in uh, in the short term overall i think i do think on analysts have analysts have said that the uh, australian dollar should go back up to its uh, 80s again but there are easier trades i think until um, there's some negative news around the us dollar then i won't really look to trade this pair but if you are then look for any kind of pullbacks before looking at getting long and buying the australian dollar if you want to get short then look for a pullback up into the 70.7750 area to look for any kind of short trades. Moving forward now to the Aussie yen and Aussie yen. Um, for me, I do like this pair. I want it to come down a little bit more. And that area there is actually will be quite a decent. In fact, I think if it can come down to this 82 round number, that's where I'd really be a, um, I really want to be a buyer. For me, it doesn't hasn't come down just a, 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 you know enough for me to want to look for any kind of long trades because of the risk reward to the upside. So um, I really want to see prices come down here, and then you obviously have if that's your risk, look at the reward. Yeah, better risk reward the more prices pull back, and uh, in a risk on environment, the Australian dollar is the one really to buy. Um, so as long as that narrative is maintained and the sentiment is maintained, then the, uh, the Australian dollar for me is a buy. So it's just waiting for prices to pull back into a deeper zone, a fresher zone before looking at getting long. But if, if sentiment does change, then look for any kind of short trades. Technically, that area there, that 85 area, um, is a really nice zone for, for a short trade um, if prices come up here and then some sort of risk off environment comes into the market. And finally, looking at gold and gold. Um, gold was a bit of a mixed bag again. You're seeing um, prices come up to this supply zone. Fundamentally, I think gold has a lot of um, uh, things going against it. You know, bond yields, for example, bond yields um, going higher. Uh, the dollar strengthening as well. So US dollar and also you have um, uh, 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 the 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 U.S. economy, right? So U.S. economy. So sentiment is obviously on as well in a risk on environment. Um, gold typically doesn't really do well. Um, investors are looking for a return on their investment, and gold doesn't offer any kind of yield, any kind of interest rate. So um, it is a, it is a store of value, but um, with with stock markets, you know, making you know new highs and projected to make new highs. Gold is going to have a tough time fundamentally, I think, uh, making really new highs. Does that mean that prices are going to go down here? No idea. But if we're looking at where gold's trajectory is in the medium to long term, um, I, I can't really see it, you know, making, you know, these 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 overall highs for now until I think there's a there's a definitely a sentiment change on the dollar. There's some really bad news on on the dollar and um, and the U.S. economy. Um, then I think gold is going to um, uh, maybe be a buy, but until that day happens, or that that time happens anyway, I think for me I would probably look for any you know short trades, and uh, you might see gold potentially make further uh, declines. But again, just keep an eye on maybe the dollar index. If the dollar index starts to weaken, um, pull back a little bit more, that could obviously put pressure on uh, gold to go a little bit higher. But overall, I I think uh, we should. I say we should, but um, if I was trading gold, then I would probably look for, I'd be more inclined to look for short trades than long trades. Um, but that brings us to the end of the analysis. Um, by the way, just a quick one, uh, enrollment starts on the 18th of April. So if you are looking to get involved in our private members discord group, enrollment does open uh, on the 18th for a very short time, not going to be forever. So um, uh, head over to the website trading180.com and potentially uh, sign up for you know any kind of notifications as to when um, you know we are going to be open and um, 
uh, how long as well. So guys, have a great uh, trading week. And to anyone I haven't answered yet, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Just a bit busy at the moment preparing uh, for um, the uh, uh, the opening and uh, the enrollment. And uh, I will get back to you. So have a bit of patience and uh, take care. And I'll speak to you all soon.